everyone has a different relationship with their breasts, and society puts a lot of pressure on women to think a certain way about them. The truth is, everyone has the right to lift them, augment them, reduce them, or remove them if they want, but there's still a lot of stigma around altering your breast shape or size. Our next panel of guests all underwent breast surgeries and they are sharing their stories with us now. Welcome everyone. I'm so happy that we get to hear all of your stories. And Elizabeth, I want to start with you. You got a breast lift after you had all three of your kids. So tell us a bit more about that. Well, first of all, with each child, you know, I gained a ton of weight and then it went down again and up again. So by the end of it, I was just like, my boobs were just like dog ears. <laughs> it was just flat <laughs> against my chest, okay? Um, there was nothing else I, I could do about it. But I did at 47 start running and I started working out with weights and I realized there was really no way to lift my breasts or get them back to where they were like even pre my third child. Mm -hmm. So uh, I went in and decided to get a breast lift um, so that they would like match the rest of my body finally. See, when I wanted to do my boobs back in the day, that's what I would have had. I don't mind the size. I would just want them up, like just get up a little bit. Laura, you actually had a breast reduction. What was your relationship with your breasts like before you had the reduction? Um, you know, I really loved my breasts. They were the beautiful breasts but they were just too big. Um, I felt like a porn star mm -hmm. um, for the most part. Um, anything I wore, even a simple sweater like this one, I would have never worn it too tight, too much attention. I, I couldn't wear the clothes that I wanted to. Uh, I never wore a bikini ever because uh, I felt just overly sexual or sexualized. Um, so although I thought they were pretty and, and naked, I was confident. It was mostly in clothes and how I was perceived out in the world that made me feel uncomfortable from the get-go, um, from the early age of 11. When that starts at 11 years old, mm -hmm. you probably had people paying a lot of attention to your chest. That can't feel great. Absolutely. It's uncomfortable, especially as you're going through pu puberty and, you know, that is all the attention you're getting. Um, you know, nobody looking at me in my face, people looking at my breasts all the time. So how, so how has this changed you? How have the surgeries changed you as a person? How do you feel now? I feel so much more confident. I feel good in my clothing. I feel like my I'm proportionate. Um, you know, I'm still a D. I, I'm 34D now. I was a 34 double E G before. Mm. Um, so, you know, I, I just feel like I could be myself and, and my breasts don't come first, <laughs> uh, which is, you know, the first thing I walked into a room it was, my big boobs. Kane, I'm going yeah. to you now. You were born with breasts and you have had a complicated relationship with them for quite some time. So tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so looking back, it's been over a decade of a journey to get to the surgery. And I remember just before I entered high school, I was sitting comfortably at a, an A cup, a very small, you know, appropriate to my petite frame, um, a small chest. And I entered high school and I started developing a chest. And, and I remember just feeling completely demoralized and, and I lost confidence in, in myself and I really stopped looking at myself in the mirror. So I went for many years of just oscillating between two extremes. I was either hyper feminine and trying to embrace my chest and you know I was getting a lot of attention from men and I really thought this is what society wanted from me. So a lot of makeup, heels and tight fitting clothing and then I would inevitably fall apart, fall into a heavy depression and and start wearing XXL hoodies just to hide my body because I was experiencing what I know now was gender dysphoria. I didn't have access to that language. I didn't have anyone around me who could teach me that these were things that I was going through. So you ended up having top surgery. Talk to me a little bit, Kane, about how that surgery has changed your life. Well, I, the first thing I wanted to say is it's really been harm reduction for me because I spent a lot of my life feeling really, really depressed. I really didn't feel at home in my body. And for a long time, I didn't want to be here. So this surgery has really opened up possibilities beyond what my younger self could have imagined. And 
as a trans person and as a survivor, it just feels amazing to feel a little bit more in control of how I'm perceived and, and less of an object or being hypersexualized by people around me. Best possible ending to this story. Thank you for that, Kane. I'm going over to Carmelia now. You had a different set of insecurities about your breasts. What were they? Oh my goodness, different insecurity entirely from Laura and I'm from Kane. I, I was born without large breasts and I have two older brothers. I felt like I was the third because I had no boobs. I was probably, you know, a, very, a handful, like in my mind, an A cup was no boobs. Uh, and particularly because I was around, I work in the dating and matchmaking business and everything is about image. I, it took me a long time. I had two of my children. I thought I wasn't gonna have any more. I was 38 at the time. And when I had the augmentation, it was great. I chose saline. There was a choice between saline or gel. But a year and a half later, Tracy, one of my, my right boob deflated. So Ooh. it was like I had one boob, big bigger boob, and one smaller boob. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I had another surgery and I chose to do silicone gel because they will never deflate. And then I, I finally am happy. Amazing. It's like you had like a boob menu and you could choose from the <laughs> menu. That's incredible. Absolutely. Thank you, Elizabeth, Laura, Kane, and Carmelia for sharing your stories and really giving us insight on your choices. I'm sure it will resonate with a lot of people watching.